of boxes around. Honestly! Oh, don't you talk about my boxes. I like boxes. So, following a video about my most popular character, Chia Flower, I now get to make one on another big character, Selena Osiris. It probably goes without saying that Selena is a major player in Shroud of Piety, therefore has a big development story behind her. Do note that I am doing this on the Selena Osiris present in the modern chapters, and not the flashback lore. Reason being is that the flashback lore chapters feature an entirely different version of Selena, and therefore in my book, a different character altogether. So unfortunately, I will be not delving into the French Revolution days, but might still reference it a few times. Flashback lore Selena will be a topic for another day. So for those who don't know, Selena Osiris is the deuteragonist of Shroud of Piety, a character who commonly reoccurs in the modern chapters and is the star of the flashback lore. In the case of the modern chapters, Selena is founder and leader of the Reaper Four, a four-person posse hellbent on rejecting the consortium, and in the case of Selena, opposing her former companion, Suri Yaktosh. Selena is the second godcraft, like Suri, and therefore boasts supernatural abilities, most notably the ability to respawn three days past death, as long as she remains pure. Unlike Suri, Selena can materialize a scythe into her hand, and is the owner of a red sports car with similar functions to Suri's motorcycle famine. The biggest difference of Selena's godcraft powers is that she has unlocked to hone the ability to go into Form Zero, a special power radius that gives she and her allies practically apocalyptic abilities in battle. Lastly, and perhaps best remembered, is that Selena identifies as being Frankish, not French. Frankish being the long-expired culture of the Frankish Empire. She does, however, speak modern French. There's much more to say about Selena Osiris, but that's the easy rundown of her character. The story of Selena is both bizarre and extremely creative, so let's get right down to the strangest part. What inspired me to create Selena? Come in, come in, boys. Don't do that, Constable Anderson, unless you want to watch this woman burn her face off. Shall we watch it burn? No. Well, come in then. <laughs> First of all, Storm of the Century, great miniseries. I highly recommend it to just about anyone who's looking for an extremely mysterious and suspenseful time. So, before Selena's creation, I watched Storm of the Century with my family and took a special liking to the story antagonist, Andre Linoge. The man in the beanie hat. He ranks very high up in my list of favorite villains, and as soon as I finished Storm of the Century, I knew that I wanted a character like him. But, off of the few seconds of movie clip I showed, how do I get Selena Osiris from Andre Linoge? That's the real mystery of it all, because the final product is nothing like Andre Linoge, as we all know. When coming off of Storm of the Century, I now knew that I wanted a new villain for Shrouded Piety for Sir Yaktosh to rival. The idea was to create a calm but dark character like Linoge. To start it off, we needed a name. It didn't take long for me to decide on a gender, nor did it take me long for a first name. But the last name was quite the adventure. See, in her earliest concept, I was planning to create Selena O'Donnell, a woman from Ireland who takes inspiration from Wolf O'Donnell of the Star Fox series. Shortly after, I decided to throw away O'Donnell, but keep the Irish concept the same. I instead changed it to something unique, typical science characters, and ended the name with Osiris. For a moment, I was almost certain to go with this name, until then realizing that I could just settle with Osiris. As such, we got Selena Osiris. Next came her design. I knew from the beginning that I wanted Selena to be a fitting rival for Suri, so I designed her, designed her as being short. That's something many of us no longer realize, but the concept drawing of Selena had her as being short, whereas in the final product, she's in fact one of my tallest characters. Next, and perhaps most iconic about her, is that I wanted to give her a tougher appearance than most of my other female characters. For this, I gave her thick eyebrows. The eyebrows were made thick for two reasons. One was that I think that I look tough with thick eyebrows, so I figured it'd work for her as well. Secondly, while drawing her, I was listening to the theme song of, forgive my pronunciation, Setsuki Kirian. I had no idea who this character was, but I loved the theme song a lot, and had a picture of her in the video. In said image, I saw a woman of thick brows, which ultimately led me to follow suit with Selena. So, yes, I am in fact therefore admitting that major inspiration for Selena's large brows indeed comes from that of another anime character. Lastly, I give Selena darker skin than most characters I've made and blue hair. Why blue? That is, believe it or not, something that will be investigated far down the road in the story itself. Same goes for the discolored eyes she has in the modern chapters. A major difference of Selena's character involves her faith. 
In the very beginning, the plan was made for Selina to equal the fourth piece of the pie in the story, Satanism. This is vaguely made evident by the pins she wears on her collar, which are, or were, in fact, supposed to be a form of pentagram. The original religious purpose Selina played was to exterminate what remains of the Abrahamic religions and then try to turn Satanism into the new state religion of the Great Consortium. This also means that Selina would be a perfect rival to Suri, who was originally supposed to be a Christian zealot. In this original concept, the Reaper Four's intention was going to be to lure demonic spawns into her lair, where she would presumably have been constructing an army of satanic spawns that would one day serve her in a satanic crusade against atheism, Christianity, and other surviving faiths. And here you thought Shrouded Piety was already dark, eh? The fact is, following my invention of Selina being a fellow godcraft and former best friend of Surya Aktosh, the idea of Selina being satanic was permanently discarded. Being that Surya once served the papacy, and that Selina believes Surya to be evil in the modern chapters, it can be assumed that Selina views the former Holy See as being evil, and therefore an enemy. For this reason, Selina is definitely not Catholic. Furthermore, Selina hates Germans, therefore it's unlikely that she worships Martin Luther, being that he was both German and hated Jews. For this reason, it is more unlikely that Selina follows a more agnostic branch of Christianity in the end, one that sanctions the type of extreme violence she conveys. One more thing. Just prior to the start of Shrouded Piety, Selina's character led to what we know as the Osiris Reform, the first ever executive order of sorts for a scientific story. The Osiris Reform's call had people forget what they already knew about Shrouded Piety at that point, as the Reform then took all of the disorganized ideas they had previously claimed would make up the story then created one final organized summary of what Shrouded Piety would be about. The result of the Osiris Reform led to the creation of the story we see today. The reason the Reform was named after Osiris was to honor the rapid and radical changes being made to the story since her creation. Before Selina, it was suspected that Shrouded Piety would mostly be about Suri Akhtash killing demonic beings. Since the Osiris Reform, we ended up with something very, very different, but undoubtedly better. And next on the list will be... Hmm. That should be easy enough. 